It's Friday, March the 28th, 2014. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, and this is episode number 27 of TEN, Transport Evolved News, for the week beginning March 24th, 2014. When the Republican governor of your state defends his actions by claiming he's only following the law, then challenges those who don't like it to change said law, there really is only one thing for it call his bluff. That's exactly what happened in New Jersey this week, where Democratic State Assemblyman Tim Eustace has sponsored a bill that would reverse a recent regulatory change from the New Jersey Motor Vehicle Commission banning Tesla from selling electric cars direct to its customers. Assemblyman Eustace, who drives a Nissan Leaf as his main car, told us in an exclusive interview earlier this week that he began drafting Assembly Bill A2986 as a direct response to the sudden and sneaky inclusion of anti-Tesla regulation into that March 11th Motor Vehicle Commission meeting. By the time notorious Republican Governor Chris Christie went public last week to say that the commission, which he personally appointed, was just following rules, Eustace's bill was days away from being introduced to the lower house. If you want to read our interview in full with Eustace, do head over to www.transportevolve.com and check it out. In related news, an ongoing battle between Tesla and the auto dealer associations in Ohio was given a little boost this week, with the news that the Ohio Senate Finance Committee has advanced an amendment to Ohio Senate Bill SB 260, granting Tesla approval to open and operate a third Tesla store in the state. The amendment to Senate Bill SB 260, a pro-dealer bill designed to stop Tesla Motors and any other automaker from selling cars directly to consumers, will now be passed to the Senate for an official vote. For Tesla Motors, its customers and its fans, the ongoing nationwide battle against powerful auto dealer associations is far from over, nor has SB 260 been officially passed yet. But in this ongoing war, we think Tesla fans will want to stop and enjoy this little victory for a little while. Well done. Monte Carlo's world-famous rally, or rather its younger sibling, the 2014 Monte Carlo Zen Rally, that's zero emissions, no noise, was won last weekend by Renault Zoe. In total, 18 different teams took part, driving cars like the Nissan Leaf, Mitsubishi Imiev, Tesla Roadster and Think City, among others. This year, a total of three teams took part with the Renault Zoe, but it was the Renault Works team, driven by Greg John Kalink and co-driver Yves Muner, who walked, or rather drove away, with the trophy. Winning outright in every single test, the duo's car never fell below 42% full on the race, despite one moderately long 55-mile stage. Facing thick fog and torrential rain, we suspect taking part in this year's Monte Carlo Rally wasn't quite as picturesque as it has been in previous years, but we do look forward to seeing who will win next year. And we can't help but wonder how long it will be before someone enters in an all-electric Volkswagen Beetle in the race, if only because we fell in love with Monte Carlo Rally thanks to Disney and a certain bug with a mind of his own. Nissan officially announced a recall yesterday of its 2013 and 2014 model year Leaf Electric cars to fix a software bug which could prevent the passenger seat airbag from properly deploying in an accident. The Leaf, like other modern cars on the market today, uses something called an Occupant Classification System, or OCS, to determine if the front passenger seat is occupied or not. Essentially a specially designed load sensor, the OCS automatically disables activation of the front passenger airbag if it detects the seat is empty. Yet a software bug, which has been duplicated across more than 1 million Nissan-made vehicles worldwide, could prevent the OCS from operating correctly. In affected vehicles, the system failed to detect that someone is sitting in the front passenger seat and may fail to deploy the front passenger airbags as a result in the event of a crash. Nissan says reprogramming of the OCS system under the recall notices is expected to start mid-April and will be offered to owners free of charge. Nissan will contact affected owners directly. After billions of dollars and years of research, you'll be able to buy a mass-produced fuel cell car next year. That's according to Japanese automakers Honda and Toyota, who both say that they will bring full cell electric vehicles to the consumer market as early as next year. As the Nikkei Asian Review reported this week, Honda is currently finalising development of a five-seat passenger sedan, which it said could be offered in Japan as early as November next year. Although the vehicle's wheels will be turned by an electric motor, electricity to power the motor will not come from a battery pack, but from a hydrogen fuel cell stack and a tank of compressed hydrogen gas. Initially, Honda expects its fuel cell sedan to retail for under 10 million yen. At current exchange rates, that's about 97,000 US dollars. 
Honda says the tank, made of carbon fiber to help reduce weight, will hold enough hydrogen to enable a range of around 500 kilometers. That's 310 miles. Like its rival, Toyota, Honda is keen to point out that this is twice the range of most electric cars, although we should note that the pair obviously haven't heard of the Tesla Model S, whose NEDC range for the top spec all electric Model S is one mile more. We suspect it's going to take quite a long time before hydrogen fuel cell vehicles truly reach an affordable price, if ever, although Honda and Toyota are obviously keen to reach mass market affordability within five years of vehicle launch. Despite what BMW's press corps told us back in February, BMW's range extended variant of the i3 electric car still hasn't qualified for any purchase rebates under the California Clean Vehicle Rebate Project. If you look at the official CVRP list published by the California Center for Sustainable Energy, you'll note that the BMW i3 BEV the BMW's all-electric version of the i3 is top of the eligible vehicles list. In fact, there are a total of 13 other purely electric vehicles and two hydrogen fuel cell vehicles listed alongside the car as being eligible for the full $2,500 CVRV rebate. Below them, a further six highway-capable plug-in hybrid and range-extended EV models are listed as being eligible for $1,500 of CVRP rebates. They include range-extended electric cars like the Chevy Volt and Cadillac ELR, Ford's C-Max Energy and Fusion Energy plug-in hybrids, and even the Toyota Prius plug-in hybrid and Honda Accord plug-in hybrid, both of which have tiny electric car ranges. In related news, however, it looks as if the state of California is working towards extending the current 40,000 sticker limit outlined in the legislature for the green HOV lane access program introduced earlier this month and passed unanimously by the relevant Assembly Committee. California Assembly Bill 2013 seeks to increase the number of green HOV lane access stickers available from 40,000 currently to 85,000 stickers. Now the bill has passed committee, it will need to make its way through both houses before it becomes law, but things are looking good so far. The Vauxhall Ampera, the British cousin to the Chevy Volt, is being given a pretty massive unofficial price cut by many Vauxhall dealers across the UK. Listed at £33,695 before government grants, the range extended plug-in car is eligible for £5,000 of UK government grants, which instantly knocks off five grand of its sticker price. But as Auto Express reported this week, a whole slew of Vauxhall dealers are knocking a further £5,000 off, making it possible to drive away in a new Ampera for just 22995 the UK equivalent of the cash on the hood deals in the US, these deals are undoubtedly designed to encourage would-be leaf drivers to jump to the range extended Ampera instead, or perhaps encourage those who want a range extended EV like the BMW i3 Bev X to save a chunk of cash and opt for the Griffin badged Vauxhall instead. Either way, this unofficial price slash should help sales of the Ampera, which have lagged behind the leaf in the UK 5 to 1. Do you remember poolside the oh-so-arrogant I'm a one percenter ad starring Neil McDone for the Cadillac ELR? You know, the one which caused a stir earlier this year when it decided to portray plug-in car owners as someone who hated Europeans, didn't take vacations and was frankly the kind of person you wouldn't want to work for, let alone meet at a charging station? Yeah. Well, in a stroke of advertising genius, Ford, yes, Ford, has come up with its own version of the poolside ad featuring Passion Murray, the founder of Detroit Dirt, a sustainability consultancy and advocacy group. Murray does a great job of mimicking the delivery of the ELR ad, but with just enough fake pomposity to make it truly hilarious. And at the end of the ad, instead of getting into the oh-so-expensive ELR, she sits down in the more down-to-earth Ford C-Max Energy Plug-in Hybrid. And her n'est-ce pas at the end? That's just sassy enough to make us laugh out loud. Or as my son and his friends at school are so keen to say, lol. That's it for this week. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode of TEN. And in the meantime, visit www.transportevolve.com for all the EV news that's fit to print, subscribe to our channel and other shows on YouTube, and join us live for our talk show later today when we'll be discussing these and other stories on Transport Evolved. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and until next time, stay juiced up! Would you like to drive around in a bomb today, children? Let's get a hydrogen car! Yay!